Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, from me, Guy Munson, to our regular six-minute strategy summary. An extraordinary week for financial markets. US equities up 2%, European equities up 5 to 6%. The UK leading for the first time in many weeks up 7%. Oil even better up 10%. As markets began to anticipate a really realistic prospect of recovery in 2021. First, they were buoyed by reflections on the US election, a Biden presidency, but probably a Republican Senate, almost the optimal outcome for financial markets. The extraordinary news of a 90% effective COVID vaccine from uh, Pfizer and BioNTech of Germany. But against all of this haunting numbers, I'm afraid, on current infections, 152,000 new cases yesterday in the US, record hospitalizations, record numbers in New York State. <clears throat> so where do we go from here? Does this tentative value rally continue? Where do US bonds go? And what's the outlook for wider markets? Now, let's start with slide two, the COVID vaccine, the extraordinary announcement from Pfizer that they have achieved 90% effectiveness in tackling COVID. I remember they were, the market was looking for 60 to 70%. Flu is around 30 to 60%. This effectiveness is more like the measles vaccine. And our analysts and our health experts say this is just the tip of the iceberg. The Moderna data should be with us any day. The Astra Oxford data should be with us any day. And I think those will be as effective but probably they'll be less difficult to transport and won't require these very low temperatures, which the Pfizer solution requires. In addition, I think there'll be great news on therapies and treatments. So a huge progress from the medical front. But that's against, I'm afraid, another surge in infection rates, particularly in the US and Europe. And you can see the new lockdown measures beginning to, to uh, appear in the charts here. The COVID-19 stringency index we've looked at regularly, shooting up sharply for France and the UK, I'm afraid very close to those April rates. And that's flowing over into economic activity. I've shown there on the right, the London City Mapper Mobility Index. This tracks transports across the capital. You can see that sharp gap down on Boris's latest lockdown rules. Now it's not as bad or anything like as bad, I'm afraid, uh, I'm, I'm glad to say yet, as it was in April, May, but you can see the direction of travel. Set against that, of course, the markets are continuing to digest the US election results. Yes, Trump is challenging many recounts, but remember in the last election in Wisconsin, um, the recount just changed the overall vote in favor of Trump by a measly 131 votes. So we don't think they're critical, nor do we think any of the key legal challenges will probably be successful. If I'm right, then we have a Biden win with a centrist Democratic president hamstrung by a marginally red Senate and a less blue house. With the old Fox, Mitch McConnell in the Senate, expect extreme fiscal pushback on any spending programs. So what you get is an internationally minded, credible president with a fiscally conservative Senate, and the markets typically love that. On the right, I've shown you a combination of electoral outcomes in the US from 1950 to 2015. And if you go to the bottom, Democratic president plus Republican Senate is the most stock market favorable. I'm not saying we'll repeat the 16.5% average annual results that that achieved, but you can see why the market was excited. So the trends last week not only powered asset prices up, they also changed leadership. For the year to date, as you can see on the left of slide five, the growth index, that's the Russell 1000 US growth index, has soared above the value index, driven by the stay at home post-COVID plays and the FANG stocks that are part of that. Uh, you can see the value index was actually down for the period. But in October, that trend reversed particularly strongly this week. Now, some would argue that Monday was the strongest day for value stocks in 30 years, as uh, JP Morgan data. The question is, will this continue? And should we be repositioning portfolios to reflect this? Well, to answer that question, the first thing we need to look at is bond yields. You can see on the left of slide six, 30 year bond yields falling consistently for 20, even 30 years. But look at that uptick in the last two to three months. US bond yields are actually up 50 basis points from their lows. And I know bond yields are critical for growth stocks. They keep valuations high. They put a huge value on long-term premium growth. And you can see they've lifted the trailing PE multiple of the S&P 500 to a staggering 34 times. We think bond yields can go a little higher from here, but we argue whether an outbreak to the upside was really likely. And if it did happen, we think central banks would probably intervene. Second, we need a strong rebound in profits. And there the numbers are good. 
We're getting better than expected earnings numbers across the world. This is a survey from McKinsey of 2,000 world, lead, world business leaders. They do this every month. The blue lines are improving profits and improving customer demand. And you can see extraordinarily, despite the virus, those numbers keep improving. So the earnings picture, particularly among industrials, is turning better. And that's a support for value. Thirdly and finally, I return to a repeated theme of these talks, the surge in climate change related spending. To our 2050 goals, we can now add South Korea and Japan, and we have a huge movement in terms of climate change. This typically is favorable to many value stocks, to industrials, to utilities, to the banks that finance them, to construction, to a whole number of areas that have typically lagged the market. So this again is a potential argument for change. So it's early days, we're not pivoting our policy dramatically yet, but you will likely see across portfolios a gradual but persistent shift towards value and a gradual chipping away at some of the core growth names that have powered your portfolios and our strategies for the last three years. Well, I hope that's helpful and thank you very much.